So welcome once again. Um, we have here with us Professor Charles Burnett of the Warburg Institute, um, an expert on uh, one of the uh, world experts on the history of astrology, we has, which has already um, gave us a first uh, interview and a first talk on uh, his views and his experience with the history of astrology. And in this part, uh, this is a continuation of our previous conversation, and we'll discuss a specific um, topic on the professor's current work, which is astrology and the use of talismans, and, and, and that, that shift between um, the astrology and the practice of uh, talismanic and um, magic, which was, in cert by certain authors, um, a, a branch of astrology in its own, the inception of images and the creation of images for talismanic purpose. So welcome again, Professor. And uh, so please tell us uh, a little bit about your current research work on this topic. Well, um, I am editing together with an Israeli scholar called uh, Gideon Bohak, um, a text um, on talismans, probably the best known ta text um, in its translation into Latin in the Middle Ages, by Tharbit ibn Qurra. Um, mm -hmm. Just a little bit about the, um, Tharbit and then I shall talk about talismans, because Tharbit uh, who lived in Baghdad in the um, 9th century, died in you know, just at the very beginning of the 10th century. Um, he was um, a Sabian from Haran mm -hmm. um, in northern Mesopotamia, which was well known as a place for um, the continuation of the pagan worship of the planets. Um, and so they had uh, many texts written by, well, often attributed to Hermes Trismegistus, on how to worship the planets. Tharbit moved to Baghdad, and there he was a leading, um, uh, 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 a leading translator from works um, of works uh, um, in Greek and in Syriac. Syriac was his first language. Um, from these um, works into Arabic. And he translated some of the best known works, I mean, including Ptolemy's Almagest, um, Euclid's Elements, and, uh, and a, a large number of medical works. Um, but he was best known, I suppose, for his expertise in mathematics. Um, he um, um, is uh, um, he discovered um, what we call the uh, amicable numbers, the relationship between two numbers whose factors, um, 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 when added together, uh, make the factors of the other number and so on. So uh, he's um, a, a fine uh, mathematician, and he would say, and yet, but in addition, to all these technical advanced works in mathematics, um, he wrote a work on talismans, a kitab fi um, uh, of which the Arabic um, version, uh, written in Hebrew letters, in fact, has recently been found in the Cairo Geniza. And this has been the incentive for making an edition of the Arabic and the and Latin. There were two Latin translations in the Middle Ages. Now, why talismans? Um, well, um, if you look at works which we call works on magic uh, in Arabic in the ninth century, um, works which were attributed to Hermes Trismegistus, um, usually in the form of Aristotle, uh, supposedly Aristotle, teaching his royal pupil Alexander the Great. Um, and so um, uh, these works we call the Pseudo-Aristotelian Hermetica, in which Aristotle um, is uh, describing um, to Aris um, uh, Alexander how he can control his life, control the universe, um, through the use of talismans, um, and through the invocation of spirits. Mm -hmm. This is one context. We also have 
um, uh, the Ikwan the Safa, the Letters of the Brethren of Purity, probably of the same age, um, which also emphasize these, what you might say, hermetic influences within the universe. Um, and, uh, and then both of these works were used in the early 10th century um, in Spain um, for the most famous work on magic altogether, the Gayat uh, al-Hakim or the Picatrix mm -hmm. by Maslama al-Majriti, um, al um, of, sorry, Maslama al Kurtubi, um, Musta Maslama of Cordova. Now, if we look at these works, we see that we see a whole program of learning. Um, first of all, you have the traditional um, liberal arts, the, um, the trivium and the quadrivium, these uh, arts of uh, speech and the arts of mathematics. And then beyond that, we have. Um, 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 well, let's say beyond the last of the Corbolivium, which is, which is astronomy, um, you're going towards um, what is regarded as being magic, as being um, the science which enables you to change things. Mm -hmm. um, and this consists of alchemy, divided into alchemy, divided into um, uh, what we call, what is called Nairanjat, taking up a Persian word for Arabic, for, for, for magic, um, which involves all kinds of um, ingredients, making um, potents, making um, powerful um, 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 well, um, works of power, let's yeah. say. And the, third, and the third subject is talismans. So talismans comes at right, right at the peak, as it were, of this uh, program of learning, which starts with the quadrivium and trivium and progresses through these other kinds of magic mm -hmm. to talismans. Why talismans is exactly in that position is a, quest is a good question. Why um, does, uh, is it really important to know how to, I mean, this is what is the, uh, the basis of talismanic knowledge, um, how to bring power to a material object. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, a talisman is any object, uh, whether it's um, a stone or a garment um, um, or you know, a, a table or anything, uh, mm -hmm. which has been made powerful through the infusion um, of um, power from elsewhere, usually mm -hmm. from the planets and the stars. Um, and, um, and through empowering these objects, you can actually achieve changes within the world. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see, in a way, how this makes man a kind of deputy to God. He is also mm -hmm. a creator. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, it's very important that the wise man who's had this education, this very long, long years of education mm -hmm. in all, all the subjects, um, should also be a man of un um, uh, um, uh, impunable um, morality, um, somebody who is able to do good for the community. Um, now, so I'm going on at, at some length, so do, do stop me, but um, what is this object of power? Mm -hmm. um, people have said, uh, well, compared um, these talismans as they are described, um, um, in the 10th century, in, in the 9th century in Baghdad, um, uh, they've compared it with what we find in the Greek uh, corpus hermeticum, um, in which we have instructions of how to make gods, mm -hmm. um, uh, how to empower the statues of gods, specifically, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of the stone statue. Um, and through various rituals and prayers and so on, you can entice the spirit of God into that statue mm. and make it powerful, sometimes even make it speak. Um, and sometimes in, well, the, the statue itself becomes alive. Um, and at the very beginning of this work by Thabit ibn Kura, we have well, two important statements. The first one is to say, um, that none, that if you do not know the science of talismans, um, all the knowledge that you've achieved up to that time is worthless. Mm. 
So it is really the culmination of human knowledge. Um, the second statement is day, say, it says that um, a talisman um, um, well, is a material body, um, but it's like a human body or an animal body that if it doesn't have a soul, it's useless. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, in fact, there are this bit is not in the extant Arabic, it's only in the mm -hmm. two Latin translations. Um, and in fact, there are two ways of interpreting this, that a talisman mm -hmm. is a body which needs a soul. Mm. One way is saying um, it's comparable, it's comparing this by, uh, to science, uh, human knowledge, the total, mm. some total of human knowledge, which is useless without the science of talisman. Okay. It's a, an analogy, mm -hmm. um, but the other way, which is taken up by these sign by these magicians like Master Mal to be, is that um, a material body um, has no um, effect, mm -hmm. um, no potency unless it has a spirit brought mm -hmm. in from outside. Um, now, um, Tharbit's book on talismans. Um, you, would, you might expect um, um, that Tharbit uh, would be describing how to bring in these spirits, these uh, um, incorporeal spirits, celestial spirits indeed, um, into a corporeal object. Um, but in fact, he insists from the very beginning that what he is doing is bringing down or taking advantage, full advantage of the natural um powers of the stars mm. and the planets um he's saying in this arabic version and in the um literal translation that we have um by john of seville who's well known for making translations of astrological works in toledo in the early 12th century um he's saying um that this is an entirely a natural process one is using um, the powers that are undisputed of the stars and planets for affecting things on the surface of the earth. Um, and, um, and the only thing that is, well, goes beyond this, as it were, uh, in the instructions you're told how to and when to, especially when to, make the talisman to make the most, the most, um, the best use of the powers of the stars. Um, but the only thing that goes beyond this, as it were, is that on uh, you write on the talisman. Say it's a talisman for driving out scorpions. You write um, on the talisman. This talisman is for driving out scorpions. So um, it's it's not an oath. It's not a curse. It's not a charm. It's simply stating the fact. This is what it will do. <laughs> yeah. um, and so uh, he goes um, through various, um, he describes what he calls exemplary um, talismans. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, one example of each kind mm. from which you can extrapolate and make um, more talismans. Materials are not so important for Thar, but it is the, um, the time of the, the correct the, mm -hmm. the time at which um, the effects of the stars for the particular um, aim um, mm -hmm. of the talisman are strongest um, mm -hmm. and for this reason well in fact um, I discovered mm -hmm. that his talismans fall under two categories of mm -hmm. astrology First, mm. under interrogational astrology, mm. then under elections or catarchic astrology. Yeah, that, that's very because in most cases, what you have to do um, is, well, first of all, your client will come to you and he'll ask a question. Mm -hmm. He says, mm -hmm. you know, I want to um, gain some money. Mm -hmm. or I want to find out who's stolen my money. Um, or I want to know, or I want to become... Uh, but the boyfriend of a girl or even of a boy um, <laughs> um, and this is the interrogation the question mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
um, and the um, talisman maker, let's call him the talisman maker, he might be different from a, he might not be a professional astrologer, mm -hmm. but he knows his astrology. Um, um, he will then take a chart of that very moment of the question. Mm -hmm. And as long as the client um, has asked that question with what is called a radical intent, Okay. Might be another way of translating the Latin or the Arabic, but mm -hmm. um, he has really concentrated on that question. Mm -hmm. So, the whole of his mind. Yeah. So, according to the, the rules of interrogations, the question is considered as valid and as powerful and it's powerful. Correct. Yes. Uh, yes. So, it's know. very important to observe um, very precisely the positions of the stars mm -hmm. at, mm -hmm. that, at yeah. that time. Um, so this will determine hmm. whether a talisman will be successful or not. It's just a yes and a no. Mm -hmm. um, and if it's not, then you've got to wait some time. It says a year, in fact, before you ask the question again. Um, but if you do um, um, find that the talisman will be effective, then you use an election. Hmm because you've got to choose the time now, yes. mm -hmm. um, which is most appropriate to bringing two people together um, or to gaining money um, or to becoming friendly with the king or whatever the subject is, mm -hmm. um, because um, the actual um, time is determined very much by the position of the planets in the 12 celestial places. You know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you've got to have a, an appropriate planet in um, the eleventh place, if you're looking for friendship, for example, mm -hmm. exactly. Um, or in the second place, if it's something to do with your money. Um, also, positions that would support the. That would support, yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. So, um, so talismanry um, brings together these two um, aspects of astrology, mm -hmm. um, and then there are once you've started, to, uh, you know, you've got to know exactly when to start making the talisman, and there are, then there are instructions on, mm -hmm. on how to make the talisman. Um, and um, as I say, you can write the purpose on the talisman, but you don't have to say any prayers, you don't have to use any incense. Um, there are instructions, I mean, if you want to um, gain, well, if you want to destroy a city, I mean, you, you, these are really very drastic uh, aims, but one is destroying a city, another is to actually um, repair or resurrect a city. Um, you've got to put the talisman in, um, at four corners of the mm. city and bury four, you've got to make four talismans and bury them at the four corners of the city and so on. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, the pad talisman will, will indeed will, um, uh, will render its effect. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a strange word in his text, which means, which says the talisman will be effective as long as it is talismaned. Whether that means um, there is a kind of spirit within the talisman which might eventually wither away or die, mm -hmm. um, or whether it means that the person who's made the talisman or mm -hmm. the client um, has got to bear that talisman in his mind mm -hmm. and use his own um, mental strength, as it were, to keep mm -hmm. it active. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, just to finish this lecture, as it were, <laughs> um, this is not the end of the story because um, this text, which we've discovered now in Arabic, um, and the literal Latin translation, which has been known for forever, um, this text also exists in another form mm -hmm. um, called the Liber Prestigiorum Therbidis, mm -hmm. which means literally the Book of um, Talismans. It's another word for talisman, it's Prestigium, um, or Prestigium. Um, and Therbidis is a genitive made up, made from the proper name Tharbit. Um, so it is the book of talismans of, of Tharbit, mm -hmm. but it was translated earlier than John of Seville's translation, Toledan translation of the, um, the Arabic text that we have, um, by, translated by Adelard of Bath, mm -hmm. 
includes mm. in fact instructions on how to drive scorpions out of bath not that bath had any scorpions but <laughs> um, but you can drive any vermin out of a city this yeah. talisman but Adelard um, or his source indeed includes or adds um, these prayers to the planets or to the spirits of the planets mm. more specifically to the spirits of the planets he includes um, suffumigations of incense mm. Includes writing um, um, rings on cloths and mm -hmm. then covering the talismans with these cloths, um, and um, and these are all what we call uh, elements of ceremonial magic, mm -hmm. um, which actually um, well here we can um, look at another text, i.e. Masama al Kurtubi's um, Picar Tricks. Um, in which he describes the same processes as adding power to the talismans which have been made according to astronomical principles. Okay. Um, so whether Tharbit himself was responsible for this variant text mm -hmm. um, in which prayers and things were added, um, uh, we, we don't really know. Um, it's probably, I mean, such texts must have existed in Arabic already before mm -hmm. uh, Adelard translated them into uh, in, in this Liber Prestigiorum into Latin. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, in fact, it was the uh, John of Seville astronomical talismans which became the most popular one in Europe, mm -hmm. maybe because it was the more acceptable in mm -hmm. that it did not infringe um, the Christian religion in apparently praying to uh, entities who are not God or the or the saints, um, or whether for some other reason we have over well, the latest count is 61 manuscripts oh. of this uh, of these astronomical talismans. Mm -hmm. Which means it was quite popular and circulated. It, a lot. Was, it was in circulation, yes, and there's even a printed version from mm -hmm. 15. Um, 49, I think. Yes. yes. I wasn't aware what, what surprised me because it's not an area I'm quite familiar with. It's this connection with the interrogations. I know, of course, that the election part is also is always the center, so that the talisman must be uh, elected at a proper time and an adequate time for the function of the talisman. That's yes. I, I had never seen this connection, I had never heard of this connection with the interrogation. So a question asked and then a talisman is made to, to provide yes. a kind of remedy to the or solution to the, to the, to the, to the hmm. problem that is put forth by the client, which is quite interesting. And Yeah, well, mm -hmm. well I want to say two things to that. First of all, um, the Liber Prestigiorum of Adelard of Bath puts even more emphasis on this double Mm, okay. These are the two-stage process, let's say. Um, but um, in the Arabic and the John of Seville version, you have talismans which don't have interrogations at all. Mm -hmm. Not even, well, sorry, they have elections, but not interrogations. I say not even because sometimes, instead of using the chart of the question, you use the chart, the birth chart, mm -hmm. um, as the basis, as it were. Mm -hmm. But of course, if you're driving scorpions out of a city, <laughs> I mean, Scorpion neither has a birth horoscope nor asks a question, <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and you don't have a client. I mean, you just uh, so in that case, you're addressing the scorpions directly. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have an interrogation. Uh, you just have the election. You, you know? have the election to empower the action. Yeah, you to empower the action. That's right. Mm -hmm. Then you put the talisman in the middle of the place where the, where the scorpions live, you know, yeah, yeah. or the place which is being um, infested by scorpions. Um, so, um, and then, um, well, this can be applied to enemies as well, human ele enemies, but of course you, you don't have a chance to talk to your enemies. Uh, yeah. um, and, and they are, and they also are not individuals. Mm -hmm. You have a swarm of scorpions. Yes. You have a, an army of enemies. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so uh, interrogation doesn't come into that at all. Exactly. It's not uh, part of the process. Yes, that's, that's but, quite... but, uh, but the, the talismans for either destroying or restoring um, a city, they're interesting because they take the city 
as a human being, mm -hmm. which does have a birth. Mm -hmm. It has its birth horoscope. Exactly. So, um, so I mean, of course, there's no interrogation, but you can use that birth horoscope mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then make the election. Mm -hmm. Well, sorry, you use that birth horoscope to see whether your the, the talisman is going to be effective. Exactly. And if exactly. it is, then you make your election. And it would have to be affected within the natal qualities of the city. For natal qualities of the city, that's right. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. It's part of all the, the, um, the astrological geography. Or, yes, like, yes, yes. Places and cities and regions. Yes, mm -hmm. quite, mm -hmm. interesting, quite interesting. So yeah. it's like um, the, the, the talismans will use the, the, the astrological knowledge to create a tool. Uh, mm -hmm. um, a sort of a technology that allows you to harvest those significations and that power that yes. influence towards a specific mean. So you have a tool. Really. Yeah. Yes. Yes, it is a tool. Yeah. Um, is it actually called? I mean, um, the, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, in, in, it's strange because in Arabic, mm -hmm. um, the usual word for talisman is simply surah, which means an image mm -hmm. and so that's why in latin the work on talismans is called dei marginibus and of course image can mean so many different things <laughs> uh, have so many different connotations um and for the driving out of scorpions in fact you do in fact use the image of the scorpion you've mm -hmm. got to make the talisman in the shape of the scorpion um and we might think of talismans as being um, inscribed stones, or in, uh, well, especially inscribed me inscribed metals, mm -hmm. um, um, but the predominant um, image of the talisman in Thabit is of a statuette, a figurine, mm. um, and so if you're wanting, uh, if somebody or your client wants the love of somebody, you're making two figurines, yeah, mm -hmm. um, and you're making them embrace each other. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you're wrapping them up in a cloth as if they're in bed together, you know, mm -hmm. and, <laughs> and you're putting them into the house of the person whose love you want, you know. So it's, uh, um, uh, and and on these figurines, again, you can mark, this is a figurine. No, no, sorry. On the figurines, you mark the names, of course, okay. of the people involved, mm -hmm. as well as um, this talisman is for love. Mm -hmm. exactly. or, or indeed, I mean, each talisman has its opposite. Mm -hmm. The um, talisman for the destruction of a city um, is well, has has its uh, antidote, as it were, mm -hmm. um, which is the talisman for the restoration of the city. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to bring two people together in love, you're also going to be able to separate people. Yeah. So, um, I think the, the the only talisman which doesn't have an, uh, an opposite is the talisman for driving out scorpions because you're not likely to actually want to invite scorpions. Mm -hmm. in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that too shouldn't be the case. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that, that, that is very, very interesting. Uh, very interesting. And when do you think you, you'll have that one, that one ready for edition? Um, maybe well by the end of the year, certainly. Mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent. I think it will provide a good source of information <laughs> regarding, uh, <laughs> regarding our own research uh, in terms of astrological techniques and, and methodologies. It's quite interesting. Sometimes these kinds of elections for these specific actions and for yeah. these magical actions sometimes are quite um, interesting because it's just such a such a specific objective that they have in, in mind when yeah. they use talismans that it's very interesting to see what kind of astrological configurations, positions, and yeah. they will choose for such a detailed, specific event. And, and that's usually very, very, yeah. very yeah. interesting in terms of analysis. So, in, in fact, the astrology is not very complicated. I mean, it's mm -hmm. traditional astrology, but you're not using a lot of different doctrines. Mm -hmm. You're just looking at what is called the Lord of the House. Mm -hmm and its relationship to another lord, mm -hmm. uh, which, as, as you will well know, um, means you're looking at the lord of the sign of the zodiac, which is, an, is in one of the, at the cusp of one of the twelve 
yeah. astrological places. So, I mean, if you're looking, if you're interested in wealth and gaining wealth, and you look at the second place, mm-hmm. you look at the sign of the zodiac in that second place, mm-hmm. and the lord of that sign, mm-hmm. um, and then um, depending if you if the wealth is you wanted to gain it from your um, from your friend, maybe you look at the planet, which is the Lord of the sign of the 11th. in the eleventh place. You know, and and these are the basic things: the planet is the Lord, the sign of the zodiac, yes. and space. So it's uh, at the same time, it's quite simple, quite direct in the way. Yep. It, yes, oh, yes, wow. yes. Mm. Mm, interesting. A couple, a, cu- a couple of um, lots are also. Um, mentioned mm-hmm. um, and uh, yeah but there's very little astrology in fact <laughs> it, it's all astrology but there's not a wide range very direct it's, they don't yeah. go into intricacies of, of technique when no no mm. okay. yeah, quite interesting. very interesting subject <laughs> mm. very interesting mm. topic because it does pop up constantly when when you're reading uh, sources even in the even latin christian sources like as you mentioned abelard and there are many, many more which have this part of astrology which is the, the casting of, of, of images or, or yeah. Yeah. And yeah. part yes. of the process and it is until the, the renaissance and and later in early modern period you're mm. still hearing they talking about um, natural magic and they kind of operate more or less within the same logic to construct events to construct uh, machineries to construct um, instruments that will uh, will have a specific action upon the world which is um, yes yes well of course it's related to um, several other magical techniques one might say you know like putting Mm -hmm an object into the foundations of a house you know to ensure that the house Mm -hmm. will um, stay um, won't fall down and uh, um, sticking pins into wax figurines you know classical one (laughs) classical one right Um, and uh, and votive offerings you know Mm -hmm. the use of uh, Mm -hmm. figurines again accompanied by prayers is what I'm offered by Christian Mm -hmm. prayers in order to ensure um, the health of the don- do- donor of the, the object. Mm-hmm. Um, I think uh, why um, one reason why um, talismans might have sort of um, might be a little more um, hidden is mm-hmm. that people haven't recognized um, little statuettes, little figurines as being talismanic. Yes. Um, but they must have been produced. Uh, quite large numbers yes and from from what i've seen for example of the few narratives detailed narratives that we have Mm. uh for example um dedication of churches construction Mm. of new buildings even as late as seven as 17th century Mm. um you see that there's no explicit um mention of a talisman or of a astrological operation being considered in the past But the way that sometimes it is described, the time in which the, the offering and the mass and all of that ritual yes. is being made, even within Krishna, it mm-hmm. is quite suspicious. And I suspect yeah. that the process of, of a talisman or a, a ritual meaning with an astrological chosen time, it's much more present than we would imagine. Yes. Uh, yeah. In yeah. fact, I think I missed out one stage. I mean, you have the interrogation Mm-hmm. The making of the tal- talisman, and then you have the burying of the talisman, either in the mm-hmm. wall of the church or in uh, in the yeah. lair of the scorpion, and so on. Exactly. Um, and all three occasions mm-hmm. are determined by mm-hmm. the, the chart, yeah. the celestial chart. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. 
Well, Professor, thank you very, very much. Uh, I think this, this uh, second bit was quite interesting uh, in terms of research. I would ask you just a final question for a student, for a researcher who is interested in this specific topic of talismans and this operative magic, what would you recommend as a course of uh, research? I know this is a, quite a... <laughs> but, um... Well, in fact, um, there is a little book in which the very text that we are editing is translated into English, mm -hmm. um, which is common, to, I mean, includes a commentary. So, I mean, it's quite useful if you just want to know what's going on. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, um, of course, when one's making additions in uh, Arabic and in Latin, what one is concerned about also is how people at the time read about this. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, uh, this is very much for a modern reader, um, and its uh, translation. It's curious that he should call it astral high magic. Mm -hmm. Talking again about this culmination of human mm -hmm. knowledge. Yes. Um, the De Marginibus of Thabit Ibn Kurra, translated by John Michael Greer, with a commentary by Christopher Warnock. I mean, mm -hmm. both these people are well known for their interpretation of uh, the magical facts. Yeah. Magic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, if you want, uh, yeah, um, if you want a really scholarly book <laughs> on the subject. <laughs> Mm -hmm. You have uh, Nicolas Weil Paro, Les Images Astrologiques au Moyen Age et à la Renaissance. Mm -hmm. um, and um, significantly, he's not calling them talismans, he's taking up the word used mm -hmm. in Latin and in Arabic, the mm -hmm. image. Mm -hmm. um, and specifically, the images which have the, the power of the planets in them, the astrologique. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a very good book, but it's a very um, thick book too, and it's in French. <laughs> the difference was noticeable. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, Professor, thank you very much. Um, and I hope to see you uh, in future podcasts of the yes. Okay. So we can uh, in the future discuss or specific works or some, some kind of paper that you're doing. We would we love it to have you once more. Uh, to, to talk about your experience and your research. Um, well, it will be a pleasure. Yes, yes. I'd like to listen to the other interviews that you're uh, planning as well. So, mm -hmm. Okay, so thank you very much and we'll hope to see you soon. Yes, right. -o.